Hello and welcome to the Outpost CTD YouTube channel. My name's Mac and for today's video we have a Q&A series video and it's going to be a good one. Automatic versus manual transmissions with the Ram Cummins. I'm surprised I've never covered this subject before so we're going to cover it in this video. Which is better? Is there an answer to that? I think there is an answer but it's a bit complicated so we're going to break this down into several categories and I myself am the owner of both an auto and a manual uh, one of these trucks. So I've got some uh, firsthand experience to compare the two. For the daily driver and commuting category, I'm going to give this one the advantage to the automatic. Uh, the automatic mainly being an advantage just because of the shifting and avoiding needing to do your own shifting when you're out on the roads, when there's typically more traffic on the roads. Now, daily driving, you're not necessarily always in traffic but I still think it's easier with the automatic. I find myself, even years later, still tending to do those daily driving uh, trips with the auto, uh, more so than the manual. Um, the manual, I just take it out when I feel like driving it. Uh, the automatic, though, I'm more likely to take that and do little run errands and stuff like that, give this category to the automatic. So for unloaded city driving, no surprise here. I'm going to give this one to the automatic. This is the one that the auto has the biggest advantage over the manual. I know when I'm in town, uh, after a couple of red lights, I'm starting to get sick of all these gears in the manual. So the automatic I find to be a bit more advantageous in the city unloaded driving around. Now, how about the highway? Unloaded on the highway... So you would think maybe I would choose the manual for this one. I'm actually gonna say that it's a tie. I think it depends on certain conditions because out on the highway, unloaded, we're talking, if you wanna run 80 miles an hour down the interstate and make good time and be comfortable doing it, I would actually prefer the automatic because of how they tend to be geared. Now, both of my trucks are 373 rear ends but the manual truck will rev a couple hundred RPMs higher than the auto will. So if you want to do 80 miles an hour, my manual truck here might be screaming at 2,500 RPMs. I don't like that. That gets old pretty fast. And uh, so if you want to make good time, high speed interstate driving, um, I think the auto is better. But at lower speeds, like 50, 60, even 65 miles an hour, the manual is quite all right and I enjoy driving it on the highway. It really has no disadvantage at those speeds compared to the automatic, I don't think. So in the towing category, I'm gonna give this one to the manual transmission. In my opinion, it's an easy win for the manual. I know on the automatics, the newer trucks, you can electronically manipulate the gears, but on the manual, you're in full control of when you upshift and downshift, and the transmission gearing seems to be designed for towing uh, particularly. You've got a very short first gear for taking off in second and third gear also very short. Uh, so taking off from a dead stop with a heavy load, I like how the manual transmission feels. Meanwhile, at cruising RPMs in overdrive, the RPMs are high enough that you generally feel safe to run overdrive, at least I do, uh, with 373 gears in my rear end. And other transmissions like the 68 RFE or the Ison, you might lock out sixths and only run fifth. So that's what I like about the, the manual is it works well if you're doing towing day in and day out all the time. So I think the manual wins the towing category. So for the maintenance category, I'm going to give this one to the manual transmission, although there's some pros and cons. For the manual... Let's compare the auto and the manual, my maintenance schedule. So my automatic, I do every 30,000 miles uh, transmission oil change and oil filter. It requires the removal of the transmission pan, which is a bit of a mess and hassle. Even if you have an aftermarket pan with a drain plug, which I do not, you would still have to remove the pan to access the filter. Um, 
on the manual trans, I'll do the oil in it, say every 60,000 miles. There's no filter to change and no pan to drop. And refilling the trans, I would say, is easier on the automatic. You dump the fluid down the dipstick and that's it. On the manual, you either remove the shift tower or pump it in. I tend to pump it in myself, uh, which is a bit more of a hassle. But I would still, at the end of the day, take the service on the manual. I can get the job done faster by simply draining and refilling it and being on my way than worrying about dropping the pan. Plus, only half the frequency uh, is what I do on the oil changes because the oil just holds up better in the manual. A lot less heat going on inside that transmission with the manual. And then the only thing I could say about the automatic long term is how often will the transmission have to be removed from the truck? I would say if you take care of your automatic and you know you don't put a big tune on it and blow it up, the automatic trans should not be dropped from the truck as frequently as the manual. I would say you would go through clutches in your manual transmission faster than you would rebuild your auto. Now, when that auto does get dropped, the expense is going to be much more than, than the cost of doing a clutch in your manual. But um, it should be less than half the frequency of needing to drop the auto. It should be a third of the frequency dropping auto trans versus dropping the manual in, in my book. So that would be maintenance. I, I give the edge to the manual trans though. Uh, performance. So performance, I have them as a tie. And I think it depends on what your situation is. Let's talk about stock trucks. On stock trucks, I think the manual trans is, is the better performer depending on the era. In the 90s, early 2000s, the manual transmission trucks came with more power from factory. And then it was pretty comparable for the rest of the 2000s. Then the autos got the much higher outputs in the 2010s and, uh, and up. But on a stock transmission, so this truck I'm in right now has a G56. The internals of that transmission are better than... Um, you know, they can hold more than stock power. They can hold 400 horses. So you could put a 50 horse tune on this truck, not have to actually rebuild the whole transmission inside. A new clutch may be needed, but let's say you have like an 05 or an 06 model truck that made 325 horse from factory. You want to do a 50 horse tune. I think the stock clutch is going to be borderline, but it might actually hold it. You know, I, I mean, I'd be confident enough just to give it a try. And if it doesn't hold it, then order yourself a new clutch, but that may be the only supporting upgrade that you need to get up into the high 300, 400 horse if you want to do a mild tune on a stock truck, like a third gen like I've got. Now the automatics, I think as soon as you tune it, you need to do a transmission build. That's my opinion, but I really don't trust any of the transmissions besides the Ison for any added power from factory without a build of sorts. So, I mean, you're looking at thousands of dollars uh, transmission build to upgrade into at least like a, a towing uh, transmission uh, build. And uh, so when it comes to performance, you can really build up those automatics. And I think when it, when it gets extreme, maybe the automatics are a little bit better in the performance category. And then, of course, on the newer trucks, the automatics holding more power from factory and I think the ultimate trans that Ram has had for how well it performs would be the Ison automatic. So overall, this one is a wash. I'm giving it a tie. Now for reliability, this one I'm giving to the manual trans, even though I think the most reliable transmission is the Ison automatic. But overall, through the years, the manual has been the way to go. I like the simplicity of it. It's all mechanical, no electronics on here. Everything's very simple. And they seem to be built better to hold more power, at least up to about, you know, late 2000s. Um, but even, even to today, the some of the automatics, the Chrysler automatics, still have a, you know, not so good reputation for reliability. Uh, meanwhile, the manuals seem to have a good reputation 
even though there's a couple issues that are known, like the fifth gear nut on the NV4500 from the 90s and uh, other issues like that with the manual. But the, the number of major problems with the manual is less than the automatic. The automatic, you have widespread issues when trucks have any sort of added power. You've got the stories about heat exchangers and coolant infiltrating the trans and blowing it up. And when the truck is subjected to towing all the time, the automatics seem to suffer shortened lifespans as well. So I think overall in the reliability category, I would give it to the manual as well. So end of the day, daily driver, automatic wins, city driving, automatic wins, highway driving at high speeds on the interstate, maybe the automatic is better, but it's generally a tie overall. Towing, I give to the manual. Maintenance to the manual. Performance, I have as a tie, depends on the situation. And reliability, I have the manual. So that's my opinion, auto versus manual. Let me know what you think. Post a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.